Okay, so today we are going to look at the demand for healthcare or the demand for medical care. Uh, first of all, um, in economics, we study the, the choices that people make. So, how do people make their choices on what healthcare services they seek for? Okay, we believe that individuals are rational beings and that they make decisions basically to maximize utility. And we say that utility is a concept that relates to the fact that if we buy a good or a service, we derive benefit from it. So basically, individuals make a decision on what service or good they are going to procure based on maximum utility. So we need to have that in our minds as we discuss this. In relation to health, individuals will make a decision on whether to seek for a screening test or not based on what they perceive to be the utility associated with the service of screening. So someone will have to decide whether they go for the disease screening or not. It's also very important for us to look at health as an investment because if you invest in your health, you're going to be productive and then you're going to be well economically as a country. So a country can invest in health with the thinking that it can increase the economic productivity of the given country. But also at individual levels, we can look at health as an investment because it is only when you're healthy that you can go and work and be able to get something for yourself. So health can be looked at as a stock, that everyone has a stock, but that stock can be looked at as a machine that is procured, but if it is not maintained, it is going to depreciate very fast. So everyone has stock, but it is important that that stock is maintained. So it is important that health is maintained. There is a tendency to have health depreciating as a good. So Guzman's investment model helps us to look at health in terms of outputs and inputs. So if you look at an individual person, everyone has what you call health capital, which will let this stock or this investment can be replenished as time goes on. Okay, so they can increase their stock if they do seek for proper medical services for their illnesses. And therefore, we may think of individuals making decisions in the aspect that they actually make trade-offs with other goods. Because we have seen that health can be regarded as an investment. Also, health can be regarded as a good. So people make decisions to choose health care and other goods. And that is the concept of utility function. And therefore, coming back to our main topic, which is that demand for healthcare. Demand is defined as the ability and willingness to pay for a service or a good. So if you have the particular service or good that you want and you have that ability to pay for it, then we call that demand. Healthcare demand is quite unique, but if you get an illness, you can't wait for when the prices of the drugs that you used to treat that disease are down. So you cannot wait for the best deal in the market. So this is one unique aspect of healthcare. And then we have what you call health asymmetry. But the person who is providing the healthcare service is way more knowledgeable than the person procuring the service. Okay? So that is information asymmetry. The users and the providers are not at the same level in terms of knowledge. So that makes the aspects of supply and demand quite difficult because of knowledge asymmetry. Healthcare is provided in different settings and it is difficult to actually assess the quality of healthcare provided in a particular context. So the treatment of a particular disease may not be exactly the same and the quality may not be the same. The other aspect of healthcare demand is that you 
are not at liberty to advertise for the services. Doctors cannot advertise themselves so, and things like that. So knowing where to get the service at whatever price is quite different. Individuals make choices based on maximizing utility. But it's also important to, to understand that the increase in utility cannot be indefinite. So for any increase in utility, oh, we can basically say marginal utility is a concept that says that there is an additional utility that you obtain from an extra input. And then there reaches a point, even if you increase the input, you do not continuously increase the utility. And that is diminishing marginal utility. Okay, so there is decreasing satisfaction even after making sure that the desires are met. So what drives healthcare demand? If you have a growing population, it is likely that the number of individuals with chronic conditions will increase. And this will be associated with the need to have chronic care and therefore demand for health care will increase. The disease patterns and prevalence in a given area will increase demand for health because people will always seek for treatment. And then advancement in technologies and treatments. There are illnesses that may not have been treated but then with technological advancement the treatment may be available at a large scale and even at affordable scales, and that uh, may increase healthcare demand. And the healthcare policy and funding, who pays for the medical bills, influences the demand for healthcare. If a country is more developed economically, it is likely that they have more demand for quality healthcare. Okay, so increase in income levels is associated with increase in demand for healthcare. And then individual patient preferences and expectations also influence the demand for healthcare. Just like any other good in the market, the price of the substitute influences the demand for healthcare. So how can you relate the price of a product to the demand. And this brings us to the law of demand, which basically says that if the price of a given product falls, the demand will increase. If the price of the, of the product decreases, then demand will increase. So therefore, price is an important marketing tool that you can use because there is a perception that highly priced medications are actually effective. This may not necessarily be true. So pricing of products and services can be used as a marketing tool. And therefore, still related to the demand law, if the price increases, the demand goes down. So the last concept that we shall look at is what you call a supply-induced demand, which is the fact that a clinician may make individuals take particular treatments even when they actually don't deserve them. So it is the supplier making sure that there is demand for a particular healthcare service. So in conclusion, demand in healthcare is quite unique and it is driven by a number of factors. It is very important for us to understand these factors in order to design our medical services to meet the needs of the population. Thank you.